Before we start drawing, the first thing I want to do is, um, I guess, help you develop the technique of saving your file. Uh, many times you can start a project, keep working on it for a really long time, and um, and then the software crashes and you've lost your file because you haven't saved it. So one of the first things to do once you start working on a file or have opened it is go to File and select um, Save or Save As. Save As will overwrite other files if you've already opened them and you want to create a new name. I'm going to do a Save As a Project. I want to just talk a minute about where you could save it. I'm going to save mine in a folder, which I have selected here. But you want to, I want to encourage you to save to your Alfred State OneDrive. This is a cloud-based storage place, and you can access your files from wherever you are on campus or at home, anywhere in the world, because your file is saved up on the cloud. So I suggest you practice with this. If you're uncomfortable about saving your OneDrive right now because you haven't set it up yet or you don't have it, um, you can just save it to your C drive or wherever you can find it on your computer. In this case, I'm going to leave mine for CV1. And um, I did a save as, so I can actually rename this. I wanted to call, it started out as Project 1, but I really want to save it as um, CV1, Computer Viz 1. And I'm going to go ahead and save. Now, Revit will start making backup files. It'll say CV1-0001. Uh, for you automatically um, and depending on how you've set up the backup files, which is kind of a nice piece of security measure. Uh, but don't count on Revit doing the backup files for you. You should save whenever you've done a substantial amount of work. So let's go ahead now and actually build something. We're going to grab the floor tool. I'm going to grab underneath it here. You'll see give you a little icon showing you the blue thing about the floor. Floors can be um, not just floors, but they can also be like sidewalks, road surfaces, other elements that you might find useful um, because it's a flat planar surface. So they use the floor tool um, as a way to, um, I guess, help organize the kind of shapes you're creating. So we're going to grab the floor architectural. I'm going to click it. Mine's going to open up and say floor generic. It could actually be anything, but I suggest you uh, have that. If you have that, please select floor generic. We're going to build on level one which means that we're going to be, um, if I was to go, I can't actually go there right now because we're in the construction mode. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, we have a whole, now what's changed is if I was to go backwards on this, if I hit, if I hit um, cancel on this, that little red box, I'm going to go back and grab the floor tool again. And I want you to notice the color of the top toolbar as it changes. When I select floor architectural, it changes to this green area under here. That indicates you're in a modify and create and in this case, it's modify and create a floor boundary. We get a bunch of tools to allow us to create. And I'm going to select the rectangle tool. We'll experiment with the, all kinds of these tools um, as we move forward. And I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll just make a box down here. I'm not concerned about, so I left clicked, dragged, and then clicked off of it. I can draw another one just to show you what I've done. So let me hit escape. I'm going to go through this a little bit tediously in the beginning just to make sure that everyone is getting the, um, excuse me, um, the basic concepts. I'm going to see if I can delete this. I'm drawing a box over it and clicking delete. I'm going to grab the box tool again by uh, left clicking. And I start up in the top corner or anywhere I want and drag down, clicked, and then click off. And I have generated a shape. And then I go back to the modify tool to deselect these. I'm going to grab this top line because I'm going to reshape this. So notice I'm going to click on that dimension. I'm going to type in 100 uh, because I want to precisely make that 100 feet tall. I'm going to grab this other line and I'm going to grab up at the dimension and I'm going to type in 100 and I believe it is 70 feet. And that gives us the full um, pad that we're going to start building our four buildings on. The last thing I want to do is create these fillets on the front just as if they were curved pieces of curb. So I'm going to grab the fillet tool. This is another one of the drawing tools here. Left clicking, I'll left click on one line, left click on the other line, and you'll notice I can pull back with a radius. I'm going to do the same thing. Left click, left click, pull back. And I didn't pay any attention to the dimensions because I'm going to go back and correct those. So I select the line. I'm going to click six feet, six foot. I'm going to grab this one. And I can put this number in, in, in different ways. I could put, um, excuse me, I could put um, 72 inches, which is 6 foot. Oops. And I'm really being cumbersome about this. 72 inches. And it will automatically do the math for you. So once I've created that, 
I have the shape I'm happy with. I'm going to click the checkbox and now it turns blue indicating that it's created that surface. And let's quickly verify that that's a surface. So I'm going to go to view and we're going to make our first 3D view of a model. I'm going to click on the doghouse, double click on the, with my left mouse button and there's the creation of that floor system. Now the floor is outside of some of the boundaries, but you'll notice that it's, it's built on level one. If I was to uh, hold down the center mouse button and the um, shift key, I can actually rotate my drawing until we can see that it's right at level one. If I want to get back to that view, I just click on this top corner and it will recenter things. So this box is a navigation box for getting around your, your drawing. I'm going to go back. Now you'll notice we have created a new tab for that 3D view. I'm going to click on the level one and we're back to this view. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to try and center it in the in the grid. So I'm using my center scroll button to pull back out my roller button. So I'm scrolling in and out in order to get the whole thing in a view. If I hold down the center scroll button and drag my my um, um, it down, I can move my view all the way around the screen. I'm going to grab the move tool now, this little arrow, and I'm going to just select anywhere I can grab something and I'm just going to move it over until it's fairly aligned within those kind of tick marks. And then I need to move these tick marks out just a little bit so that when I do an elevation or a view from that angle, I catch all the buildings. So I'm going to drag a box over from left to right. And then I'm going, that selects all of those elements within the box. And then I'm just going to grab this marker and pull it off. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Notice that if I drew the box in this direction from, um, from right to left, I, sele I select everything that I go over um, that's just included in it. Here, if I go the other direction, I can individually select it. You can play around with that and understand what the, what the implications of that are. So dragging right to left is different uh, than dragging um, vice versa. So I pull those tick markers out. We now have our floor system completed. We're almost uh, done with this video, but I did want to go to the south elevation. So I'm going to du double click, left double click on that. And you can see how that floor system is built on level one. So next we'll look at creating our first building.